eastern Uganda, another storm is brewing, bringing uncertainty to villagers who rely on the land for their livelihoods. The changing climate is hurting people like Emmanuel. His crops were destroyed after torrential rain waterlogged his fields. The weeds survived, the food didn't. Yes, na bete e kada kada lelo skona taka niki no kale kani si etenge na re kwa na muna sekipi Iran. Watam tengo ti kuri kin anu ti atame ngara kina ngongarin ponale dari due. So da biche bore nelo sata kani kino kale ka nesi da achun si na adeka si ne na re kwa na doe ya piete do akipi osepere ka kido kuralu poko da kure dongo sepere do kwa na ya puti akipi umu jo bunbe uriete do bisiru da anui. Perutus do bisiru adulun tonore mjo emuna munaite do bokupane ejare polejare. We're getting more and more reports from our partners across the world that the seasons are changing. They tell us that harvests are becoming more unpredictable and that floods and droughts are becoming more frequent and more intense. A special report in 2009 by Kofi Annan estimated that 300,000 people already die every year as a result of climate change and that's about equivalent to the population of Newcastle being wiped out each year. Climate change is affecting us all, but it's hitting poor people the hardest. Sir John Horton is a Christian and one of the world's leading climate scientists. Climate has been changing for a long time in different ways. but It's changing particularly now because of what humans are doing in burning coal and oil and gas, putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which acts as a blanket over the Earth's surface, making it warmer than it would otherwise be. And a warmer world means a change in climate. And some of the impacts of that are really rather serious. That means we're going to get more droughts and more floods. Tear Fund's local church partners worldwide can bear witness to the damage caused by the changing climate. They're offering those affected hope by helping them adapt and develop sustainably. In Peru, communities are working together to improve the irrigation of their crops, while in Bangladesh, early warning systems, community training and cyclone shelters are saving lives. These projects are essential, but won't be enough on their own. We must call on decision makers to tackle the problem globally. Wider climate action involving us all is also vital. The Bible asks us to love and never to harm our neighbour. But our consumerist lifestyle demand the use of vast quantities of natural resources. And that means we do harm our neighbours, our global neighbours in poor countries who suffer the climatic consequences even though they've done so little to contribute to the problem. Just as local churches in developing countries are taking action on climate change, so too are members of the church nearer to home. People like Bill and his family from Leeds realise that by cutting their energy consumption and living more sustainably, they challenge the injustice of climate change. There's that verse in Micah, sort of, do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. And uh, I'm just aware that I'm, I'm living on a planet and consuming far more than my fair share of the, the world's resources and, and burning far more energy than most of the people in the world, and more than the world can sustain if everyone lived like me. So I, I see it as a, a justice issue. Thousands of Christians across the world have been joining together to take action to bring justice in a changing climate, and we need many more people to join them. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Please join us in praying about climate change, the impacts it's already having on poor communities across the world and for fair and ambitious international action to tackle the problem. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Join me in finding more sustainable ways to live. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Please join our campaign for world leaders to take action to protect the poorest people who are hit hardest by the changing climate.